Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG in Brazil, and today we shall talk about an implementation of pointer analysis called Andersen's pointer analysis. This name is after Lars Andersen, who invented the technique that we shall study today. Andersen's is an inclusion-based constraint system that defines four types of constraints. These are the constraints, these constraints here. They are called base, when we take the address of a variable, simple, when we perform assignments, and load store gives us um, what we call complex constraints. Each one of these constraints come from different instructions in the program. In essence, we have a system of conditional constraints, like we had seen in the class about control flow analysis. And then we can solve the system using the, that graph algorithm that we had analyzed before. So, in essence, we build the constraint graph and keep iterating the constraints, turning candidate edges into actual edges and migrating information along these edges. If you want to remember how that works, uh, please refer to the class on control flow analysis. Nevertheless, we shall review the, this algorithm in the next slide. So, we will build a graph. Each vertex of this graph will correspond to a pointer in the program. And whenever we have a constraint saying that v1 is included in v2, then we have an edge from v1 to v2. Let's build this graph for this program on the bottom of the figure. On the right side, we have the constraints that we extract from this program. We have five instructions, thus we have five constraints. From these constraints, we build, we build the graph on the right. We have four vertices, because these constraints refer to four variables. And we have an edge from A to D, due to the constraint that says that the points to set of D contains the points to set of A. To solve points to analysis, we iterate this algorithm. At this point, I suggest you to stop the video and read the algorithm all over. The red part shows how we add new edges to the graph. Basically, new edges appear when we solve the conditional constraints that come out of load and stores. And the blue part shows the march of the lemmings. In other words, once we add new edges to the graph, then we let information flow across the nodes in the constraint graph. We call that the march of the lemmings in the last class, if you remember. I will illustrate it all with an example, so no worries. Let's start our running example then. We start with this chart and propagate information executing the last part of the algorithm. And we see that this propagation causes us to insert C into the points to set a variable D. That happened because we had an edge from A to D and A my point to C. Now we proceed to solve the complex constraints. We start with the store. So for each V that's in the points to set of D, we add an edge from B to V. In this case, we have seen the points to set of D. Therefore, we shall add an edge from B to C. Again, C belongs into the points to set of D. And we have here an assignment from B to whatever is in D. That means that information from B may flow to C, because C belongs to D. Or, in other words, star D is like a synonym of C. And because B points to set contains A, we let A flow from B to C. We now move on to solve the load. It's symmetric to the store. So for every V in the point to set of D, 
we add an edge from V to A. In this case, we have C within the point to set of D. So we add an edge from C to A. And again, we have A in the point to set of C. So A will flow to every reachable part of the graph. And we need to evaluate the store again. At this point, can you try it? Do you know what will happen once we evaluate the instruction star d equals b? Well, we have that d now contains a and c. So we already have an edge from b to c, but no edge from b to a. In this case, we create this edge. We also propagate information, but this time new information is not created. Basically, a was already within the points to set of A itself. And that's pretty much it. Nothing changes once we evaluate the load, and we are done. The graph has stabilized. So we have seen the basics of Anderson's style inclusion-based pointer analysis. In the next class, we shall study how to speed up this algorithm by looking into cycles that may appear in this constraint graph. Thank you.